What's up guys? I did not forget. It's just these last two days have been off the hook. Um, I'm here with my doggies. One of them anyway. Um, he likes to come and join me before we pray. I love you. One big old baby. That's exactly what he is. Okay. All right. You got to get down. Okay. Okay. We got to pray. Okay. Mm. Got no. One big baby. Um, but wanted to get on here today. Um, and he's probably gonna come back. <laughs> so, um, but wanted to get on here today. Um, one thing that I want to be clear with everybody is that, um. It's so important to realize and understand that there's going to be stumbling blocks and roadblocks that come along your way and you get pulled off your routine, which is exactly what happened to me. Um, I had, first off, was busy, was traveling. Um, I got caught up in travel, um, missed the flight and had to change some things up. Um, <clears throat> and also... Um, somebody has been on my mind. I mean, I'm just going to be transparent. Um, my ex has been on my mind a lot lately and I pray that everything is well with him. Um, I pray that nothing bad is getting ready to happen, but he's been on my mind a lot lately. Um, and it's bigger than just missing him because I do miss him because, you know, I love him. Um, but, um, just making sure that he's Okay. And so I really want to take that time to really pray for him. And on day 29, we're going to keep on going because this is 29 days of me getting online to do it. Have I been praying? I have. Um, I just been not been praying and the preferred method that I would like, which is praying in the morning before I leave my home. I've been praying on my praying in my car, um, praying while I'm working, um, that type of thing. So um, but we still are getting on here and day 29 says, forgive, 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 forgive. And that's the reason why, like, um, I pray all is well with my ex. And I think I want to be clear with something. Um, just because two people ended on bad terms, um, God can change anybody's heart. God can change anybody's heart. And I firmly believe that in addition to praying for that person's heart to change, it's important to allow God to change your own heart. Um, you know, when we get into the word of God, um, you know, we're so quick to preach the word and tell and evangelize um, and spread the gospel. But ultimately, we got to spread the gospel um, within ourselves. And that includes changing the way we think, repenting, um, <clears throat> understanding how important it is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, and understanding that Jesus is our savior, our redeemer. Um, he has repositioned us to be in right standing with God. And that is such a blessing. Um, and we should always put God first. And we must understand the importance of following Jesus. And I'm just listening to my dog, making sure they're not doing anything crazy. Come here, Xander. Um, yeah, so... Uh, day 29, I want to talk about forgive, forgive, forgive. Um, and that's initially what I was talking about. Um, that's the reason why I am where I am with my ex. Like I said, two people can end on bad terms, but that doesn't necessarily mean it needs and needs to stay there. Um, <clears throat> depending on the individual, you might feel like that you don't need to communicate with that individual again. That's totally fine, but still give God that piece of your heart, that piece of your mind that is struggling to forgive that individual that has committed the offense. Um, it says in um, Mark or Matthew, uh, Xander, it says in Mark or Matthew that we must uh, forgive those who transgress against us. But um, I know we, we got to forgive um, the people we've, you know, transgressed against too. So it has to go both ways. So do I pray for forgiveness of the things he's done? Most definitely. Um, but I also pray for uh, ladies. Sometimes we get in this rut where we just assume the man is responsible for everything. Um, 
it's 50 50 <laughs> you know what i'm saying i always say 50 50 when people um part ways uh, because there's always three sides to the story his side her side and what god saw so um you know it's 50 50 and so i'm mindful that i played a role in our departure and so um ultimately i always pray not only forgive him but um pray that god allows him to forgive me um and that to me is so important and then i forgive myself for holding on to thinking that you know, holding on to it. And sometimes we know we're holding on to unforgiveness because all we got to do is hear that person's name and they're like, Ugh. you know, we're all, we're back there again. And so that's when you stop and pray <clears throat> and talk to God um, about what's going on. Just being honest, right? So um, Psalms 5 says this. And I also took some time while I'm turning to Psalms 5. I also took some time to, because I ain't, I'd be lying to you if I said that normally I like to say the word in the morning because I just got so busy for a little period, I have neglected my word. So um, just getting into Psalms 5 a little bit, um, trying to look at my dog who's digging his ear so deep that it turned his whole head. Yeah, it's weird. But anyway... Um, Psalms 5 says, give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation, hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing, the Lord will pour the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship <coughs> toward the holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Make thy way straight before my face, for there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is a very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those who, those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous with favor, what thou compass him with a shield and it's psalms 5 just um it still is morning um <clears throat> and want to read um psalms 23 and i list the rest of the psalms in the description box psalms 23 says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> Psalms 23. Um, I'm just going to turn to Luke 17 and read it to its entirety. The song that I always think about when I read Psalms 23 is um the song by jeff majors who is a harpist and that is a beautiful song because it comes from i mean the way it's sung so i highly i will put the link there i highly recommend you just listen to that song because it's beautiful luke 17 <clears throat> then said he unto the disciples it is impossible that it is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him, through him they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea, than he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, mind you, this is Jesus talking a good chunk of this. <clears throat> if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye may say unto this sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root 
and be thou moved, planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. But which of you have having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meet, and will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise, ye when ye, likewise, yea, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded, you say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which, which was our duties to do. Ooh. Said a lot of words. Mouth is dry too. So, um, <clears throat> going to Luke seven three, as far as the commentary is concerned, it says here concerning Jesus' statement about forgiving. Observe the following: Jesus is concerned that we maintain an attitude that desires to forgive and help those who offend us, rather than an attitude of revenge and hatred. Forgiveness and the end result of a restored relationship cannot truly occur until the offending person acknowledges his or her wrong action and sincerely repents. For example, expresses true sorrow and makes a complete change. However, our willingness to forgive should not depend on the other person's attitude. Keep in mind that Jesus was not referring to the same offense being constantly repeated. In addition, Forgiveness does not necessarily mean that we should foolishly trust someone who continuously wrongs us or others. We must forgive anyone who sincerely repents. Jesus' statement about forgiving seven times in a day is not meant to give his approval, Xander, his approval of habitual sin. Nor is he saying that we must allow someone to severely mistreat or abuse us repeatedly. Instead, he teaches that we must maintain an attitude that is always ready to help and forgive others. So forgiveness is not primarily for you. Um, it's for you in a sense that, you know, we, that's what Jesus commands us to do, right? Um, but forgiveness is for the other person. But forgiveness also says in your heart, I forgive this person. I let this offense go off of them. However... If it's one of those things that is a constant thing, then Jesus will give or J Jesus teaches that it's important for us to be wise and knowing, well, OK, skirt, learn my lesson. <laughs> We're not doing that again. And for most of us, it takes multiple times. I, I use myself, for example, I've been in different situations with different men where I've stayed longer than what I should have and for forgiving them and just thought that they were going to change. That's foolish. I mean, I'm going to borderline say that's borderline witchcraft. I got a visitor. See, always on my lap. Um, I'm gonna borderline say that it's close to witchcraft to assume that because oh I'm gonna forgive they're gonna change. No, you you forgive. You do what is right in the eyes of God. You do what Jesus teaches us about forgiveness, and you let God deal with it. Okay, and discernment is an important thing because that's when we're able to discern are they going to be a repeat offender because then if they're going to be a repeat offender then that's when then that's when god's going to give you the godly wisdom to get out of that all right so matthew 6 9 i think i had food on my shirt as we started looking at my shirt i was like oh no you gotta go Matthew 18. Matthew 18, 15 through 20 says this. Moreover, this is Jesus talking. Moreover, if thy brother shall tr trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take Take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word shall be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man 
and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye lo shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I will say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of thee. Um, and I'll continue to read. I just finished reading Matthew 18, 15, and all the way down. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall I, my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times Jesus said unto them, I say unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought to him, which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, and he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called them, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desired, desired me. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay off all was due unto him. So likewise shall all my heavenly father do also unto you, if ye from your heart forgiven not every one his brother their trespasses. Okay, now I'm going to read different parts where it says here, and this is kind of long, so bear with me. Okay, where it says 18.5, where it talks about forgive if thy brother shall trespass. It says here. Jesus provides the proper method for of confronting, correcting, disciplining, and restoring professing Christian Christians who sin against another member of the church in a private manner. Neglecting Christ's instruction will spiritually compromise the purity and purpose of the congregation. Purpose of church discipline is to protect God's reputation and to guard the moral purity and doctrine, integrity of the church. The discipline is also aimed at saving members who drift away from the path of righteousness and restoring them into the Christ-like character and behavior. So that's the first thing. 18.9 in commentary says, This is a great spiritual authority and power that when people join together in faith and prayer, that is because Christ promised that where two or three come together in faith and devotion to Christ, he is there with them. His presence will inspire faith, provide strength, and give direction and comfort. We should take advantage of opportunities to join with other Christians in prayer, and we should not hesitate to ask others to pray with us over matters of concern. Commentary on 1835 says, In this story, Jesus teaches that God forgiveness, though freely given to those who confess and turn from their sins, still depend on each individual's willingness to forgive others. This means that a person may lose the chance to be forgiven for their sins by God if he or she holds on to bitter, resentful, and unforgiving heart. Compare Ephesians 4, 31-32, where Paul says that bitterness, resentment, hostility, and ill will have no place in the Christian faith and must be eliminated. This parable not only describes a person who did not want to forgive, but he also resented the fact that he needed to be forgiven. When he confronted those who had a small debt with him, surely he remembered the huge debt that he had been removed from his account. In fact, that seemed to be what caused his anger. He acted as if his personal debt had been caused by those who owed him. While receiving forgiveness from God, 
should not be a difficult matter. It does require humility, admission of guilt, and a willingness to change. Sadly, many people are not willing to adopt this attitude. As a result, they cannot receive forgiveness from Christ. For more on this subject, see Matthew, is this Matthew? Yeah, Matthew 6, 14 through 15, which I'm getting ready to go read. Matthew six, nine through, let me just read Matthew six, nine through. Okay, Matthew 6, 9 through um, 15, 15, 16. Okay. <clears throat> After this matter, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I'm going to go into this because some people struggle with unforgiveness so much that we have to do this action. 16 says, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as of the hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. But thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Now, it's so important when it talks about forgiveness. Read the commentary at 612. It says, prayer is a time for confession of sins so we can be forgiven. It is also time to rely on God for the strength to forgive those who have harmed us. It is so important that we get into the habit of forgiving and doing it quickly. Um, doing it quickly, doing it fast. Um, hey! Doing it quickly, doing it fast. Out there fighting doing it quickly doing it fast as far as forgiveness is concerned um because the kingdom of heaven is at hand um and a lot of times god won't hear us hear our prayers because we got unforgiveness in our heart and the only thing that i pray for today is that no is that you take some time to pray and talk to god and see Find out the areas where you need to forgive somebody. It could be something that happened 10 years ago. It could be something that happened 10 minutes ago. Um, it could be, and one of the biggest ways that I find um, very quickly, and this is the reason why I just started working on myself, is road rage. So important. <laughs> and I think, and some people don't really think about, well, this the person can't drive and yada, yada, yada. I get it. Okay, I lived in a major city for nine years, so I get it. Um, and I've lived in different states, so I understand people's driving habits are very different, very different. Okay, some of us go and praise God, and then somebody cuts us off from the freeway or the interstate on the street, and we're ready to give them the unholy finger. Okay, so we're ready to curse them out. Do you realize there's so much power in our tongue? There's life and death that come out of it. Um, and if we say something in regards to, oh, I hate it when this person does this. Do you know this, the sheer word hate is kind of like, not kind of, but it is a statement of death. You know, when you say something negative, I can't stand when they do you. Your frustration comes out, out the heart, the mouth flows. The mouth will overflow what the heart is full of. And if you are constantly full, fueled with frustration and anxiety and all this other stuff, that will come out of your mouth. And this, and for some people, what triggers the anxiety and the frustration 
um, comes from maybe a, a seed of unforgiveness for a long period of time. And then as a result, someone triggers it from one time doing something that you did not like and it comes out lula in road rage. And I will say this, I got so deep, I got so deep in realizing that I need to come out of road rage because I used to live in Washington, DC. And there was a gentleman that drove 30 miles, 30 miles because someone was cut off in Virginia. They drove 30 miles from a city in Virginia all the way into Southeast DC to drive up on them and shoot and kill them. As far as my knowledge, they never found the shooter. And that has been at least eight years, okay? Ever since then, I said to myself, no more road rage. I might say, you know, might make a comment be like, hey, that wasn't smart. Or, ooh, that wasn't safe. Ooh, come on, get it together. Might say something like that. But am I going to get frustrated? Uh-uh. Those days are done, okay? Because all it took for me was that one moment that realizing that people are out here carrying pistols, okay? And you might be saying, oh, well, you know, they don't hear me saying it or they don't see me saying it. It don't matter. You done sent your blood pressure up. You may not, that person may not have hurt you, but you hurting yourself getting frustrated. And now you got a headache because you're so frustrated with road rage. Now you got to go get a comfort meal because, you know, you, road rage has got you all over the place. Now you mad because they done cut you off and now you running late. What about you? Why did you, why didn't you leave in an ample amount of time for you not feel like to rush? Let me tell you something about me. I don't like rushing. Okay, so as a result of me not rushing, I try to be mindful of my time, okay? That is, time is a gift that has been given to us from, from God, and it's not something that we can instantly, like, we can't go to a class and learn time management. No, that is a gift. Every time God wakes us up every morning, that is a gift. That's why forgiveness is so important, because the more you hold on to unforgiveness, you taking up all this valuable and precious time that God has given you and you spending time holding on to bitterness and resentment from something somebody else has done. The same thing with road rage. You know, you using up time, even though that person hasn't done nothing to you because they ain't hear you or they didn't see you or anything of that nature. But you you up here hurting yourself, you know, you know, shot your blood pressure up. You know, shot your blood pressure up. Yes, I got a dog. So, one thing, sidebar. Dotsons are burrowers. And as you saw the blanket go up, he was trying to go under the blanket and cuddle there. Dotsons are real. They like to be under blankets, under things. It's crazy. This one loves to be under stuff. All the time. But, um... It's so important and, you know, shoot, even then, you know, even just having that little itty bit of road rage, repent, talk to God, because that's not, you know what I'm saying? That's not the attitude, that's not the posture that we should be holding on to, but because we're holding on to a lot of hurt and bitterness from other things, it just takes one trigger to frustrate us. That's why we have to think about Philippians 4.18, just focusing on things that are good and praiseworthy. So nothing wrong and and more and more I get into the word for myself. I'm very mindful of even the music that I listen to because naturally we enjoy it or whatever. We listen to the music. Next thing you know, we learn what the words are. Are these words speaking life? That's the reason why music is so important because is what is what you are listening to do you, by taking in these gates is what you're listening to is it getting in your heart and is it coming out of your mouth and is it speaking life okay now that's not to say all gospel music because <laughs> some gospel songs mm -mm. that's why it's just so important that you get into this is when i say that this is a sword even the book says that it's a sword but for real Okay, because it cuts through bone and marrow, literally, for real. Okay, it'll cut through some of these gospel songs that some of us listen to thinking it's a little bop. That bop going to send you that. I mean, I'm just going to put it. I'm just going to say it old school. It's going to come right out. That bop going to send you to hell. So you got to be mindful. And I say that because that's so old school. That's I feel like there's something one of the elders from my old church home in North Carolina would be like, oh, you keep on doing it. It's going to send you right to hell. So I think, you know, that's not a condemning statement order because, you know, I I grew up listening to Goody Mob 
Okay, so I mean, yeah, the, the stuff right there, you know, I ain't got no business. So that's why repenting must happen daily, okay? Repenting, forgiving, forgiving, forgiving. Okay, um, there is a book, and we're going to pray, that I'm going to really refocus on. Um, by trade, I am a personal trainer, um, but I also teach health education courses, trying to close out my doctorate in public health and a lot of the stuff, a lot of public health information, I will say this, some public health information is demonic, point blank period. That's just from what I know about reading the word and yeah, some of that information is demonic. I ain't even gonna lie to you, okay? It, it, some of it is even, I'm just gonna go further, some of it's witchcraft, just go a little further. I mean, yeah, I totally different topic i'm not here for that so um but i firmly believe that the cause of a lot of our infirmities and our sicknesses and our inability to take in information and learn is two reasons we don't you know we don't know the word um but a lot of us have been hurt and a lot of us are really struggling to forgive. Now, I have this book and it talks about unforgiveness. It's called A More Excellent Way Be in Health. Um, I've read parts of this and man, it's so powerful. Man, unforgiveness is literally making us sick for real. And I don't, I don't want that. I don't want to be sick. Um, my forgiveness of my ex, um, and ex is after that, uh, before him, um, my forgiveness is so important, not only for the kingdom of heaven, but also for me to receive what God has for me as a future husband, um, with God blessing me with children. Um, because I don't want to carry that unforgiveness in understanding, I don't want to carry that unforgiveness and go into a marriage because going into a marriage from what I've learned so far is dying of yourself and and submitting to being one flesh, committing to being one flesh um, because marriage is a covenant. Um, and forgiveness is so important for me because um, dying to myself means dying to my fleshly desires and what the world says is acceptable. Um, and understanding what the Bible says about covenant partnership um, in a marriage um, and releasing my flesh off of my kids, you know what I'm saying? Like not carrying burdens from my past onto my children. Um, and I firmly believe that some of us are holding on to unforgiveness and we're carrying on to our kids or our stepkids because we haven't resolved what we, we haven't tapped into unforgiveness. We haven't tapped into forgiveness. We haven't forgiven the things that have happened to us as a kid. For example, um, firmly believe, firmly believe, don't care what nobody say, firmly believe that not always, let me say that, not always, but individuals who are abused as children, um, more specifically sexually abused, uh, oftentimes they carry that with them in a lot of different situations. Um, for example, like I said, not always. Some children who are abused as kids, they themselves um, almost expose their children to abuse. Um, and they might do it very discreetly. For example, um, let's just go ahead and talk about porn let's talk about porn um because you're thinking that because you were exposed at a young age to sex and all this other stuff you think it's normal that your child is sneaking around trying to watch porn so loosely translated broken up pretty badly that's a whole nother topic to go into deeper about but uh, that goes the same thing for how we manage our emotional abuse. Like, for example, and I'll use myself in this example. So I grew up where if you had a stressful day, you got to grab something sweet. Grab something sweet. Grab some comfort food. I carried that same thing, too. Because I'm not able to manage my emotions effectively, um, I'm just going to gravitate to something sweet. But glory to God for his word, right? And so... Um, 
I all I firmly believe and I know that God will always provide us with a way out when we are tempted. Okay. Um, Jesus uh, had the word of God that protected him from Satan when he was tempting him. The word of God. Let me tell you something. Psalms 119 talks about how powerful that word is. Please get into it. Right. So um, by all means, we're going to get ready to pray. Um, if anybody wants to, I love to read. I love to read. So um, that is one of the hobbies that my mother and my grandmother instilled in me as a kid growing up. And I just absolutely love reading. And, you know, both of them liked reading about health. And um, I'm really big on that, reading about health um, and obtaining that on a biblical standpoint. Um, yeah, this is a really good book. So uh, from parts of it that I read, as you can see, it's a little thick little thick um so uh by all means um please forgive y'all please forgive um prophecy is being fulfilled and i'm just gonna say that jesus is coming back real soon so different prophecies are being fulfilled um and that comes from reading the word of god about knowing about prophecies being fulfilled and being aware of, you know, we have individuals talk about the rapture, right? So, um, now is not the time. Someone said this, I'm saying this, a direct quote from a gentleman on TikTok. Now is not the time to be lukewarm. Now is not the time. Now is not the time. Um, and even if you are stumbling off of your walk, I'm speaking for myself, even if you're stumbling on your walk, come back come back <laughs> um because i stumbled because like i said i um, didn't do my videos and i didn't get a chance to get into the word Whew. but every time god woke me up god woke me up let me tell you i'm so thankful for that for his grace and his mercy on somebody like me okay somebody who is not perfect okay not perfect still got some still got some gangster in me a little little taste little taste of gangster in me still got a little hood in me little little taste of hood in me um but i'm so thankful that god uses people who you think could not help you glory be to god god uses the least among people that can help you get your walk realigned with god is that is that is good news to hear that's good news to hear. While my dogs are cuddling, we're going to go ahead and pray before they get hype and have to go in the bathroom. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, Lord. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. This is the day that you have made, Lord, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you being a way maker. Thank you for being our refuge, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We only trust in you, Lord. We can't trust into our own wisdom, Lord. But we thank you for your wisdom, Lord. So forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. Known and unknown. The sins that we know we've done and the sins that we don't know that we've done, Lord. Lord, forgive us, Father. Forgive us for holding on to unforgiveness for too long, Lord. And forgive any, and forgive any of us that may have reacted as a result of unforgiveness lord who may have taken out revenge lord and as and and has sprung up on some trouble lord as a result lord i pray that you forgive them lord and lord i pray that they have the ability to forgive lord i pray holy spirit i pray that you put on their heart who and what they need to forgive today on this very day lord and not wait any any longer lord and every time they think of that thing lord i pray that they write it down and come back as remembers to forgive them lord to forgive them according to what jesus said in his word 70 times seven thank you lord for the opportunity to wake us up and to allow us to forgive and to ask for forgiveness lord and to release those things of bitterness off of us lord that have torn apart our temples lord and that is not your will and that is not the way that you want us to honor our bodies lord for we you were we were made in your perfect image lord and lord that you have made us just a little lower than the angels lord and we thank you lord but forgive us lord for for holding on to bitterness and unforgiveness which damages our temple which damages our image and our likeness in you lord 
Lord, forgive us, Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who teaches us about the importance of forgiveness, Lord, and teaches us the importance of humility, Lord, and teaching us to spread forgiveness onto others, Lord, because there's been somebody else that has forgiven us, Lord. Forgive us for even telling white lies, Lord. There is somebody that has shown us mercy and grace, even for telling a white lie, Lord. Lord, we just pray, Lord, we pray that we come back into a right, right relationship with you, Lord. Holy Ghost, have your way on our minds and our hearts and our flesh, Lord. Decrease those things, Lord, so we can meet you exactly where you are, Holy Ghost. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, we pray that we are able to meditate on things that are good, that are praiseworthy, Lord. Lord, we just pray to cast all of our cares onto you, Lord, because you care for us, Lord, and that you will provide us with every tool that we need, Lord, to be able to get us out of bondage, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord, for your word is sharper than any double-edged sword, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God, for the word, for your word, Lord. As part of our, our as part of our armor, Lord, that we put on every day, Lord, according to your word in Ephesians 6. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Lord, we're praying for healing for those that are that are holding on, that have held on to bitterness for so long, Lord, and has led to something chronic, Lord. Lord, we pray for healing, Lord. It says in your word that every stripe that you, that Jesus, that was born on the back of Jesus, Lord, that we are to be healed, Lord. We are so thankful for the blood of Jesus that was prophesied in the book of Isaiah, Lord, to protect us and to heal us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please heal us. Please heal us from bitterness. Please heal us from chronic illness. Please heal us from the things that have tore down our temples, Lord. It is these things that I ask for in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So thankful, so thankful, so thankful. Um, it's so interesting because I was thinking about what someone had referenced about um, I'm not going to go into who, um, because, um, touch ye not anointed. Okay. Um, but it talks about tithing and all the other jazz. I'm gonna let you go into whichever. I'm not going to talk about nobody's man of the cloth. I don't care what the situation is. Okay. <laughs> so, um, for whatever reason, heal your heart about money. Ask God for forgiveness about the things that you've done with money. Ask God for forgiveness of how you've been spending money. Ask God for forgiveness on how you've managed money. Ask God for forgiveness for being a poor steward of money. Because I feel, I feel like that we're not forgiving ourselves with how we manage money. And we're not asking God for forgiveness about being a poor steward of money. And because we are not doing those things and we have our own mind view about money that's kind of coming to our heart some of us been broke before i've been broke before um and because of what the world has shaped our views about money our hearts are turned or our hearts are hardened and we're stiff necked about tithing um please give your tithes <laughs> please pay your tithes um, and if God has provided you with an abundance and an overflow, give an offering, take care of the poor, take care of the poor. And it doesn't just have to be the gentleman on the corner. It could be take care of those that are low in spirit. They're taught. If someone comes on your mind, reach out to them. Cause you don't know, they might be having some financial trouble and they might need, if you, if, if God has pressed upon your heart to do that, give to somebody that might be in need of something. Stop complaining about these gas prices. You gotta control these gates. Stop control about these gas prices. Stop, stop, stop. Stop complaining about how high groceries are. Stop complaining about inflation. Put your eyes on the word. Fill your mind with the word. Put your eyes on the word and fill your mind with the word. And the second you want to form your mouth to complain about any of what's going on in this world, 
mash that thing up with the word. That's why we got to get into the word of God. Because everything we see is hardening this a lot. A lot. Because we're not... Oh, I'm guilty. Let me tell you something. Because I done took a couple of days and I ain't mean to. I done got out of this. Mm -mm. When they say day and night, that is for real. Day and night. A lot of us Christians are messing up because we... I'll be real with y'all. A lot of these individuals that are not in the church and a lot of individuals that don't believe in God, our creator, our savior, our refuge, they know the word better than most of us Christians that go to church every Sunday. That's just honest, okay? So this is this is one of our armors. I just pray that's another armor. Um, having faith is another armor. Um, righteousness, truth, those things, those things. Ephesians 6, read it, because that needs to be something we need to put on ourselves every day. Every day. So I don't know where that came from. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Um, but it, it just came on my heart about money that we need to fix this and study, study the word. And maybe if God leads you to get different references, this is one of my references. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this video is longer than what it should be. Another reference, and I firmly believe that when you pray, talk to God about different references that help you understand things more. Y'all, I read this book, This Changed My Life. The Bait of Satan. Offense. <sighs> wow. I don't know how those books just came about, but they came about. So here we are. But anyway, um, like I said, heal, heal your heart of the unforgiveness that is present about money. You've been broke before. God has released you from that. Okay. You may not be where you are financially, but trust God will continue to provide for you in ways that you never even thought about it. Having more month than money. Let me tell you something. God will always make a way. God never, ever is void on his word. Never, ever. And that is just so important. Somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. He likes to be loved. But anyway, I wanted to get on here and share that with you. I don't know where the Holy Ghost was getting ready to lead me to, to talk about um, forgiving your, just healing your heart about money. Um, because that is such a, a hot topic per se. I hate that word phrase. I, and look at that. But I just said, hey, but I really don't like that word. Hot topic. But anyway, um, because a lot of times, you know, money has so we 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 have the authority and the power to tell our money what to do. We do. We have the power and authority to tell our money what to do. A lot of times, the reason why we end up in situations where we're tight is because we did not exercise our authority properly on telling our money what to do. Okay? A lot of us did not do that. So, anyway, I love you guys. Um, pray you guys have an awesome day. If you've fallen off, it's okay. It's okay. I've done it. Get back. and Get back into the word. Get back into the word and get back on in your prayer corner or your prayer closet. Okay. I love you guys. And so does my doggy. Have a great day. Tomorrow we'll be back. Day 30.